Sarwani, I know you threw those numbers at us, so... I think Mr. Arwani should give us a solution. <laughs> no, okay. Having no, done so much no, research... No, no, before we come to solution, well, the question I wanted to ask him is, we've seen the GDP drop from what it was in yeah. 2022. Yeah, 2023. 2023. Even, yeah, even so, yeah, the fourth quarter, quarter, quarter 2023. Yes. The rate has increased, but in terms of value, it has dropped. Yes. That, and you talked about the per capita income. It has always dropped. So yes. what exactly are we going to be selling to investors when the purchasing power of citizens has come down? So I think you have to understand something, that GDP is an output measure. It's not a revenue measure. Okay. So uh, if you produce more, and the price of those goods that you're producing actually come down, then your GDP would increase in output, but in terms of financial value, it will not increase. So, but what I didn't say, and the last slide, is what, what the outlook for the next 12 months. So first question, are you better off now than you were last year? Definitely not, you're struggling. But will you be better off at this time next year? The answer is yes. Why do I say that? Inflation is projected to decline from 33%, to 18% in 2025. So by next year, right, end of next year, you'll be at 18% from 33%. That's a significant improvement in inflation. Fiscal stimulus, the federal government is going to put, put some money into the stimulus package and all of that, and that is about almost six to seven trillion. Impact on GDP is not going to be that much, but it's going to be something. Minimum wage, uh, now we're talking about, the guys are asking for 400, and four hundred thousand, for you know, four hundred and ninety thousand or something, and what's on the table is about sixty thousand. We think that we'll settle around ninety thousand. Even if you settle at ninety thousand, it will be two hundred percent because the former minimum wage was thirty. And you go, can companies afford this? Because if companies cannot afford this, then they are going to lay off people. So the union's uh, aspiration should not just be for wages, but to ensure that their people are at work. So that's another thing. Gross fixed investment, investment is bound to rise sharply in the next year. And the exchange rate will stabilize, in my judgment, at about 1,350 to 1,450, not 1,900 or 2,700. Or no, so that's what it is. Economic growth will accelerate to 4 to 5% by 2025, 2026. And Nigeria could regain its position as Africa's largest economy by 2027, 2028. Yeah, but Mr. Rani, I mean, even the, the drop in Nigeria's position, yes. uh, the drop in the GDP, uh, a lot has been connected to the fall in the value of the Naira. So is that the realistic, or is no. it just because of the value of the Naira? No, part, part of it is a devaluation of the currency, because you compare your, you, when you're comparing GDPs, you use the dollar comparable. But that happens from time to time, but the reality is that Nigeria's growth rate is slower than its population growth rate, one. Two, Nigeria has not been attracting investments, both domestic and uh, international investment. So whilst we have solved the revenue problem, and they are, we attest to that, and that's why we are sharing more money, and all, but the question of growth and investment, we have a growth problem, we have an investment problem, and that has to be addressed. But the time between when you Put, put, out, put out those policies and when you get the impact is what we are saying. So for the next 12 months, we've had, last 12 months has been average outcome and difficult uh, starting point. Next year, I think we are going to have great effort and above average outcome. Right. That's, that's what I'm saying.